What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're having a look at Virtual Joystick. And uh, yeah, it's not an over-engineered version, just like you see on the asset store. It's actually like a custom solution that works with the canvas. So um, it was quite fun to make back in the days and it's, it's a very good memory at the same time. So without further ado, let's get right into it. As always, let's have a look at the scene. We've got a virtual joystick that looks like crap right now and a sphere that actually moves using it. So, um, gonna go here, wait until it loads. This one has a rigid body and when I move this around, it also moves the ball. So, that's what we'll be having a look today very, very quickly. And um, again, like I did yesterday, I'm not going to copy paste the script over time. I'm gonna just give you the whole thing right away. So before that, let's have a look at the virtual joystick test. So how do we go and test it out? How do we go and integrate this within your game? Well, my ball right now, the one that's moving, um, it has a field called virtual joystick. I call it input source, but it's a type of virtual joystick. I let um, my, my user, my designer, drag and drop this into the proper area. So you're gonna have a virtual joystick somewhere in your canvas, make sure you drag it directly in this field. Then right after that, I make sure I have a reference to my rigid body in the start as well. And over time, I simply grab the direction of my virtual joystick and I move with that. <laughs> it's really simple. Now let's have a look at the canvas item itself. Here it is. It has to come within two different objects. The first one is the background, the one that you see right here that I flash. So this one has the script on it and you can call it virtual joystick container. You can call it whatever you want. Um, and for the first time, you can have any anchor you want. So uh, before that, it didn't work this way, but now you can put any pivot you want. So if you want it in the middle of your screen, feel free to do so. It's also gonna work um, this time around. So I'll be taking it and putting it here for testing purpose. Now beneath that, we have the joystick itself, which is simply a graphic element. It's nothing else but a shiny thing. So we don't technically even have to have it. Well, it's gonna have no reference, but you know, it's just for, for showing you a graphic. So yeah, that's it. Um, now let's have a look at our script. Our script is a little bit complicated, not going to lie. So this one use interfaces. Um, let's have a look at the top here. So you're gonna be using eye drag handler, eye pointer update, sorry, eye pointer up handler and eye pointer down handler. Those all come from the new Unity system. Um, so Unity engine.ui, it's not so new anymore. It's probably like five or seven years old actually, but it's uh, the second iteration of it. So this these come from the Evan system that um, come with the new canvas. So what do they do? Those are three functions that are being called automatically. You don't do it, you don't call them yourself. Um, they are being called automatically when you click on stuff in your canvas. So on drag is when you drag your mouse around your canvas while it's hold. On pointer down is when you click. On pointer up is when you release. It's as simple as that, and they're all being called on their own with something we call the pointer event data. And this one is full of information if you have a look over here. So yeah, quite a lot of information. That's what we'll be using to make this work. But before that, let's have a look at the top over here. And I just realized I forgot to put headers, so here they are. So the first one um, and the only one we can configure is the joystick visual distance. What is this exactly, Mike? This is actually um, with another default, but this is just for the graphics. So how far away can we take this middle circle and bring it out? Let me give you an example. So assuming it's at 150 right now on the right hand side, we can go all the way over here. So this is going to depend on um, pretty much on your graphic. But if we say, hey, let's go to 300, then it goes much further than it used to, but it's still the same value at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, you're still gonna have the same value down here. And um, as we go through this code, by the way, we're going to fix the fact that we can go that far upright. We're going to uh, we're going to normalize this. So, having that said, this is the only one you can modify. You know what it does now. And then we have our first image. This is our first image container. Beneath that is the graphic only image, our joystick, and then the field I keep to keep track of where um, my middle joystick is in regard to the container then this one is to access it from outside, obviously. So what do we do to set this up? We first grab the two images. So over here, I do a get component in children, which is going to give me all the children type of image starting from virtual joystick, including myself. So this one is the first one. 
that's the container and then it goes within my children and find all the other images and that's the second one if you plan on adding more graphic to it for some reason just make sure that the joystick the one that actually moved that, that need to have this displayed is the second children but I don't see why you would need to do that all right so let's close this one off let's close the start and let's quickly skip the undrag and let's have a look at the unpointer down so when we do unpointer down the only thing I'll do is simulate another frame of undrag. So just imagine this one is pointing right back to undrag. And if we release our cursor, we're gonna take our direction, put it back on zero. Um, default vector three is basically a vector three dot zero. Same thing for the graphic object. Okay, now the real meat of this tutorial. This long, very long function that I don't even know when I came up with that, probably like eight years ago, um, but it was a good find. So here's what I do. I first start by storing the value of where I'm going to be. So that's going to be my return value at the end of the day. And then I use the rec transform utility to know whether or not my screen point, so my mouse position, is inside a certain rectangle. What is that rectangle? It is my container.rectransform. Now, um, this is the background object. The position is my PAD.position. This is equivalent of saying uh, input.mouse position to some extent, but this one is directly connected to the event system that um, was sent over when we drag around. Um, we use the camera, the same exact camera that was used when we drag out something. And then for the position, that's an out position. So the result is going to be stored within position. This is also an if statement. It returns a Boolean at the end of the day. So if we are within that rectangle during a drag, we can enter this thing else just don't. my first two line up here are to give myself a position that's relative to the container itself so i'm using the size of the, the container to give myself an actual position within that container and also how far away we are from the anchor speaking of the anchor now well it depends you know your anchor could be uh one zero it could be zero zero it could be 0 0.5 0 0.5 if you're going straight in the center um but the code the way i made the code is everything has to be back on 0 0.5, 0 0.5 code-wise. Now, if that's not the case, so if my pivot is not like that, well, we're going to modify our value down here to have it go back on the reference pivot. And uh, this code is actually, it's just what I put there when I was testing. You don't technically need to put your reference up here. Uh, actually, I don't use it, so don't. But here it is, because my reference is always going to stay the same. It's always going to be 0, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, which is by the way it's the center so if you see over here my pivot is 0 0.5 0 0.5 because my anchor is directly within the center and then we just clamp our value so for both x and y we're gonna say well you can't go below minus one but you can you can't go above one either so we clamp that in between minus one and one which is going to give you like the equivalent of an axis for your input system and then on top of that i forgot to do this but we can also go down here we put them in a uh, vector but we could say this vector I want it to be normalized and this way we don't have the same bug as we had a look at earlier okay and then the last line is okay let's go ahead we have our position let's go ahead and move our graphic as well all right so let's give this a try directly in the game see if we fix our problem now um, okay so we did fix our problem with the normalize so we can't like it shows like this right now so it shows that it goes that far however it doesn't um, in input the direction it really doesn't it's only our graphic that goes that far and that's because right here it's not using the right value so let me go quickly see direction dot x and here direction dot um, z in this case because we swap them over over here to use only flat ground okay let's try this one once more and we shouldn't be able to go beyond that point. Yep, we have a nice circle right now. And that's totally good, that's perfect. All right, do we need anything else? I think we have everything. We set direction, direction is being accessed from outside, like right here. And that's actually all we need, guys. And that's it, guys. That's how we completed our virtual joystick. Fun fact, this is the video that got me rolling with N3K back in the days. That's the first video that got a lot of views and got me some, some subscriber. I don't expect it to happen once again, but if it does, hey, that's that's good. Um, yeah, we're done for today. Thank you so much for watching. 
Um, come on Discord, let me know what video I should be making next. I need three more videos for this month and I don't know which one to make at the moment, so... Um, I could be following the schedule, however there's stuff like AdMob that I'm not sure if it's still relevant. And I've, I've skipped a couple of ones like that. So, again, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel, join us on Discord, and I will see you tomorrow. Cheers.